2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, commands us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Welcome to the battle. Jesus is Lord, not just of our hearts, but also of our minds. We need to be thinking God's thoughts after him. Today we are on Beatitude number 5, Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The first two Beatitudes display the foundation of our salvation. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who recognize their true spiritual poverty. Blessed are those who mourn, who experience deep sorrow for our sin, leading to repentance. This is the foundation of true salvation. This is what drives us to Christ to find in Him our forgiveness, justification, and salvation. The rest of the Beatitudes describe the fruits and results of true salvation. Blessed are the meek, the fully surrendered souls who yield to Christ's lordship hour by hour. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Their innermost desires have been transformed from selfishness and sin to surrender and a longing for righteousness, true righteousness in thought, word, and deed. Today, the fifth beatitude, the third evidence of the new birth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. True believers understand something of the extent of mercy we ourselves have received. Mercy is the undeserved withholding of wrath that our sins have justly brought upon us. It is because Christ bore our sins in his own body on the cross and took the outpouring of that divine wrath in our place that we experience everlasting mercy from God. Because of such mercy, we are merciful to those who sin against us. It is only when we recognize how much mercy we have received that we are enabled to extend mercy to others. And this, then, is the evidence that we ourselves will obtain full and final mercy on the last day. As in James chapter 2, for he shall have judgment without mercy that has shown no mercy. And Paul in Ephesians 2, 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has saved us by the work of his Son. Titus 3, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 1, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And in Jude 1, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, future mercy at his coming. Having received such great mercy at such great a cost of our Savior's own blood, let us freely show mercy to others, being a vessel of mercy as God's mercy flows to us and through us for his glory. 
O merciful God, we praise you that you continue to show us such mercy. When we deserve your wrath, yet you pour upon us your grace and love. We stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love us, sinners condemned, unclean. And yet you do. And so give us, we pray today, a merciful heart in dealing with all those you bring across our path today. In the name of him who is merciful, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thanks for spending time in the Word with us today. 